Hello again, everybody. Zach Tech is here with the attack line for Monday, July 2nd, 2012. It's officially the July. Two more days to Independence Day to the 4th of July. Again, I had a decent weekend. Went to some fireworks over the weekend. I went to local Mount Clemens fireworks on Friday and they had a concert after the fireworks, which was Puck Cherry down there. That was fun. They were awesome. They were rock and roll towards the end of it. Crazy bitch. And also, I went yesterday to Madison Heights, Michigan's fireworks when they had a uh, Bob Seger cover band looking back. And they had a great finale, great fireworks as well last night at Madison Heights. But within the fireworks came, yes, a DJ gig. Only one DJ gig this week for me, despite having, what, three gigs last week? I only had one gig this last week, which was a grab party for a girl named Tanisha Dixon, who's a family member or friend or whatever of the family, the Lazaruses, local family who I DJ for a lot. And uh, they have a lot of uh, people who like different types of music, like this Punjabi in music, which I played a lot of this past um, Saturday. I, like I said, DJ for this family before, and they liked that kind of music, but I didn't have it perform. But they bought their CDs, and I also had the internet to help me out, because I have an iPod Touch with Wi-Fi capabilities, so they danced a lot. I think we played like one Punjabi in song for like an entire hour, and they danced to it. It was crazy. And we did all the regular day line dances that I do, Cha Cha Sly, Cupid Shuffle, and all the typical pop songs that I do. It was a decent grab party, better than I ever can expect for it. It was a decent show. Got shut down by the cops at 11, but it was a great show on Saturday, great weekend for me, heading towards 4th of July. Got three gigs this upcoming weekend, two on Saturday, one on Sunday. All right, on with your number one movie of the weekend. Well... After three weeks of domination by animated movies, a live action movie finally became number one. Viva Pacific, a weighted all comedy involving a talking bear, Ted, debuts at number one this week with a whopping 54 million. Rising above expectations. Big weekend for director debuting. Seth McFarlane, also impressing big, better than expectations, Magic Mike, another radar movie, debuting at number two with 39 million. Also Brave, still standing at number three with 34 million. Not too bad, number four debut, Tyler Perry's Medea's Witness Protection, the way to Medea being number one came to an end. With this movie not making the top two, at least not number one. Speaking of coming to an end, that leads us to the biggest news story of the weekend this weekend. As on Friday afternoon, Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes fired for D-I-V-O-R-C-E after six years of marriage. Apparently, Scientology is the rumor of the breakup. Of course, Tom Cruise is an advent Scientologist, and it's been a big question about how they're going to raise their daughter, Suey, ever since they got married, about how Katie will embrace Tom's religion. Well, indeed, after six years, she apparently had enough, and she changed dramatically with Tom. Tom changed to, of course, his dramatic behavior. His career went down the tubes. Same with Katie's career. Although, I think she was in the first Batman movie that came out, The Dark Knight, of the new Batman series. But I think she was in the second one. Tom had no idea that Katie was filing. Of course, she was filming a movie. According to People Magazine, who broke the story first, they said a source to Tom said he had no idea this was coming. He's totally devastated and heartbroken. Of course, he has the other, his other kids, too, from his previous marriage to Nicole Kimmon. So this is Tom's third divorce. I forgot we got married to the first time. But he got married to Nicole, and of course, now divorcing Katie. Like I said, Scientology, the beliefs of Tom Cruise finally got up to Katie and were the reason behind the divorce. So there you go. But while Katie and Tom divorced, Adele had some big news. Adele. Just minutes following the announcement of Tom and Katie's divorce, 
on Friday, Adele revealed that she's pregnant with her first child with her new boyfriend, not the one that inspired 21, but a new boyfriend, Simon Konecki. They were delighted to announce that they were expecting the first child together. According to a message on Adele's website, like I said, posted on Friday afternoon, she said, obviously we're over the moon and very excited, but please respect our privacy at this precious time. So, congrats to Adele. Wow, been a rough year for her. But a good year, too. Of course, six Grammys, sweeping the Grammys. No one on her next album or tour, so as you know she ain't touring anytime soon now that she's expecting her first child with her boyfriend, Simon Konecki. Now, a lot of celebrity news over the weekend, but, well, Adele and Tom Cruise ruled the celebrity news waves of the weekend. Anderson Cooper made head waves earlier this morning, as on an interview, Anderson Cooper revealed that he is gay. He came out in an open letter to Andrew Sullivan, a political blogger, saying that the fact is, I'm gay. Always have been, always will be, and I couldn't be any more happy, comfortable with myself, and proud. So, and it's, I, I can kind of see that he's, I can kind of guess, but no, like I said, I, I didn't really think that Anderson Cooper was gay, but the best tool, you know, going out of the closet could be a good thing for some people, letting go of the, you know, shame of hiding it up in public. So congrats to Anderson Cooper for coming out in the closet in the open, revealing he's gay, it's a good thing. Good gay, I think it's my best friend's a bisexual woman, so, you know, all, all the best to all the gay people out there. Be who you are, man. Be who you want to be. I, I applaud that. Seriously, I applaud Nancy Cooper for coming out. Especially with Gay Awareness, Gay Pride Month just wrapping up. So there you go. Congrats to him. Coming out. Proud. Definitely. Alright. Now with the celebrity gossip, by the way. On with award show news. Last night was the BET Awards. As I mentioned, I missed them because of fireworks I saw at the... Madison Heights. Big winners indeed were the married couple of hip hop and R&B, Jay Z and Beyonce. Beyonce won two awards, including Video Director of the Year with her co-director of videos, Alan Ferguson, and also winning Best Female R&B Artist, and her husband, Jay Z, winning two awards. Winning Best Group for his collab with, of course, Kanye, the crown. And also winning Video of the Year for Otis with Kanye. And even Jay-Z made fun of Kanye's interruptions by saying, Kanye, I'll let you continue. <laughs> that was funny. Saw that clip on YouTube. While the first couple, the now real couple, while Jay-Z ruled the couple scenes with her, he and Beyonce winning, not exactly a couple, but the first couple of Young Money, Drake and Nicki Minaj, ruled the hip hop categories winning Best Male and Female Hip Hop Artist, and I mentioned Chris Brown winning Best Male R&B Artist. Other ones going to Best Collabo winning Wale with Miguel, Best New Artist going to Big Sean, Best Gospel Artist went to Lolanda Adams, Best Actress went to Viola Davis from The Help. Best Actor went to Kevin Hart. Best Movie went to The Help with Viola Davis. Best uh, Viewer's Choice went to Mindless Behavior. An Eccentric Award. Don't know who won that, but who cares. But there was some, from what I know, there were some decent performances, including Sissy Houston, the mother of Whitney Houston, paying tribute to Whitney, alongside other performers, Shaka Khan, makes sense, as of course Whitney covered Shaka's classic, I'm Every Woman, and also a speech coming from Mariah Carey. So there you go, the BET Awards last night. I think the Teen Choice Awards are coming up July 22nd, 20 days from now. New performers have been added, including Justin Bieber, Carly Rae Jameson, I think Flo Rida too. So there you go with that, some award show news. Now, wrestling. Before I get to TNA, uh, not TNA, but I got some TNA news. Before I get to WWE and Raw preview tonight, TNA news concerning a release of a knockout. 
as Angelina Love confirmed her release from TNA late this morning. Because Angie was, of course, part of TNA when TNA started the Knockouts division in 2007. Before she came in as Angel Williams. Before she became Angelina Love with her tag partner, her BFF at the time, Velvet Sky, in the Beautiful People. They win the TNA Knockouts division, cleaning the world. One ugly woman at a time, or whatever, they're cleansing the world. And Angelina became multi-time Tina Knockouts champion. But then she got fired following a chip by the first time. I think she came back second time. She got fired because of visa problems. But then she came back being a good girl until she aligned herself with Winter, which was, of course, the storyline she was in when she left the company. And I know, um... My dad, my dad and I, we love wrestling. My dad loves Angelina. My dad is a huge Angelina fan, so it's probably going to be heartbroken to see Angelina gone. Billy's and Tina, his favorite all-time wrestler, Kurt Angle's still there, but he probably doesn't find a new knockout. My replacement for him, Angelina's former knockout's partner, like I mentioned, my favorite Tina knockout, Bella Sky. So there we go. But good luck to Angelina. Angelina did not say if she was going to... WWE or not. But good luck to Angelina on Future Endeavors. I liked her. She was a decent knockout. Um, but my dad will both miss Angelina Love, definitely. And I wish she would have got together in Velvet one last time before she went out. She wasn't used that much. So recently, she have been seen her. So it makes sense for Angelina to leave because she wasn't being used a lot. Now on to WWE and Wall Super Show tonight. Top five questions that must be answered tonight from this Warren text. Question number five. What famous former Raw superstar will return tonight as part of the ongoing celebration for the Raw 1000th episode? For the last numerous weeks, we've seen a lot of people come back. And hopefully tonight, the punching bag won't be Heath Slater. In the last few weeks, every Raw returning legend had punched, with the exception of McFoley, has used Heath Slater as a punching bag. Two weeks ago, when it all, three weeks ago, when it all began, Vader beat the crap out of Heath Slater. Two weeks ago, Sandy Lauper and Roddy Piper returned in a segment to beat up Heath Slater. And last week, Psycho Sid came back to beat up Heath Slater. Well, rumors are flying that Diamond Dallas Page will be the returning legend for tonight's show. But we'll see who it is tonight if Heath Slater or whoever will get banged. Oh, All yeah. right. Question, I wanted to, question number four. What will Teddy Long do as the GM for the night? Now, Teddy Long is, of course, the interim general manager for the night's wall. And tomorrow night's live smackdown, of course, still looking for a permanent GM after the firing of John Laurinaitis. Wall 1000 will be the reveal of the permanent GM. Vicky Guerrero was last week's interim. See what Teddy Long does tonight. Vicky did a decent job last week. See what happens with Teddy Long tonight. Question number three. What will go down between AJ, Daniel Bryan, and CM Punk? Now, last week on Raw, it was revealed that CM Punk would be defending the world, the WWE title against Daniel Bryan, who pinned him in a triple threat elimination match last week with a little help from AJ. I thought it would be Kane and, Punk, Kane and Punk, but I'm glad it's finally going to be the one-on-one -on -one over the limit rematch between Punk and Bryan. But AJ was announced this past Friday on SmackDown. She'll be the special guest referee for the match at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. However, I think AJ will get involved. And I know AJ's been involved in this love web. Now that she dumped Kane after last week, what will happen between her and Punk and Bryan? She delegated a match to Punk last week, but she won and gave the yes sign. So it makes sense to have AJ to be involved in this match. And AJ, like the kiss of death she gave Daniel Bryan, she will be the kiss of death to either Punk or Bryan to cost them the match at Money in the Bank, like I said, with her being the special guest rep. Speaking of Money in the Bank, question number two, will any of the matches or any of the participants for the Money in the Bank matches will be revealed. Now, last week, the Raw Money in the Bank was revealed to be the WWE title one. John Cena, Chris Jericho, Kane, and Big Show are all in the match thus far. I'm hearing possibly two more names will be added. I'm hearing Miz, who's currently shooting Marine 3, 
will be returning soon to be at the Money in the Bank match for Raw, reigning former Money in the Bank winner. Also, Rey Mysterio may be involved in the Money in the Bank for Raw. I'm also hearing SmackDown, of course, being the weakest one thus far. But before I get to that, I'm hearing Bordis Clay may be in it. Oh, to God, he's not in Money in the Bank. Please. That's like putting White back in the Money in the Bank. Those two don't belong. Speaking of don't belong, most of the Money in the Bank participants in SmackDown, if you didn't see my attack line a few days ago, I mentioned that most, the majority of the Money in the Bank participants for SmackDown is weak. You have Damien Zendow, Kenzai, Tyson Kidd, Santino Morella, and the man who I believe will win Money in the Bank, Christian, the only legitimate guy. And they're probably going to have maybe like one or two more people for SmackDown, maybe a returning Wade Barrett, who has been signed to win Money in the Bank for the longest time. That's why Money Bank was cancelled at WrestleMania. Sorry about that. <laughs> Alright. So I hope to see more Money Bank matches. We don't know who's facing Sheamus for the world title yet. So we may find out who that is soon. And like I said, more participants for the respective Money Bank matches, Thirdary and World Title. Question number one. Where we'll go down between Brock Lesnar and Triple H. Now, Triple H, of course, challenged Brock Lesnar for SummerSlam back in No Way Out. Paul Heyman said no, but Triple H ain't taking no for an answer. But Brock Lesnar tonight will be answering Triple H and possibly saying yes, yes, yes to the match at SummerSlam. They're just building a storyline up. So there you go. That is it for my attack line for today. See you all later for my wall review tonight. Then, mine, you have all been attacked. By the news from Zach. Thank you very much. See you all later. Yeah.